We are getting closer and closer to the draft, but as of right now, we got to look at the squad. And one position group we want to talk about today is the running back room. Does DeAndre Swift have the running back room locked up, or will the other guys have something to say about it? How will this competition pan out? Y'all know we're going to talk about it and dive into the mailbag on this beautiful Saturday. Tune in. We're going to be right back. To Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears. I'm Bobby. I'm with C-Dub today. What's the word, my guy? What's the word, bro? Let's get it, man. You already know. If you're tuned in and locked in with us today, make sure you're hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. You can follow the show on all socials at Shy Bear Central. See, Doug, we know that the Chicago Bears picked up DeAndre Swift this offseason. We know that they already had Khalil Herbert, and a lot of us, including myself, had a, has a lot of hope that Roshan Johnson can turn out to be something pretty damn good. But in your opinion, is it all said and done that Swift is going to be the starter or is it going to be more of a competition amongst these three guys in the backfield? In theory, uh, you would think you pay a whole bunch of money for uh, Mr. Swift. He's going to come in here and take take the reins and take the helm of the running back group. But I think that Khalil Herbert, I'm going to just assume that he's a competitive guy. And that he's going to come into training camp, come into the mini camp or OTAs or whatever it is, and prove that he's still the number one back. He only had the helm of the uh, the the, the uh, number one running back title for one year, and he damn near because of injury, uh, he almost missed out on that because Dante Foreman had a bunch of starts that uh, last season as well, but. What I'm hoping for is for a competition. I hope that uh, Mr. Herbert comes in and he's a he's a better player. He's still relatively young. I think he's 25, 26 years old. He's still a young kid. So go in there and and use this uh, acquisition by the Chicago Bears as motivation for yourself to go out there and prove that you're ready because he's not trash. We, we you know Swift ain't coming in because he because he trash not. We just trying to improve the position. Now, Swift, I will say it'll be the better back if you're going off the numbers from last season and just his overall career arc before he got here. But I think Herbert got it in him to surprise a lot of folks. And um, I'm going to say that Smith, for right now, he, he my number one running back because of the money and what he's done in the past. But Herbert, if you competitive, go out there and just change everything right now. Go in there and just be crazy. And then when I talk about Roshan, he's just a little pup. You know, we, we, we trying to raise up. We expect a, 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 a an improvement this year coming up from Roshan. I think we'll see it. Look for him in short yardage situations. I think that's where he best suited, um, especially like third and three or something like that, third and one. And then when you close to the goal line, put him in there he a beast it in there for a touchdown for you so i think this is a two horse race between herbert and swift if it is one so i hope it is i hope we have a competition though i'm with you on that i think I'm, I'm all for competition i believe that makes everyone around the team better and i believe that's the culture that the bears need to set is they they need to set a culture or have an atmosphere that's always based on competitiveness no matter what, they have already shown that they are not afraid to play young guys over some of the veterans. So I hope this same thing continues. I know you pay Swift some money. I'm with you. I do believe he's number one. But if Khalil Herbert, if you like that, you step like that. up, rise up. Because yeah. I do got questions when it come, come to Khalil Herbert with his pass blocking. I still got questions when it comes out, can he catch out of the backfield a little bit? I still got some questions that I don't necessarily have questions when it comes to DeAndre Swift. Now with Swift, he's more uh, of a all-around running back, something somebody that you can use in so many different ways. But Khalil Herbert, I believe he has the capabilities and the potential to succeed, but it's all going to be left on him. What yeah. do you want to do? How do you improve your pass blocking? How do you improve catching out of the backfield? It's all on him. 
We got to be putting in that work because right now, the number one guy is Swift for me. Yeah. And now if we looking over to Rojan Johnson or I got him right where we want to be, like we just still grooming a young pup. I tell because you this. this kid is a football player, and we don't know what the hell we gonna see. Now. I'm talking about I ain't just saying like he plays in the NFL. I'm just saying he's an ultimate football player. He just risks his health every single play. Y'all seen those highlights last season. Are we counting him out too soon, nephew? I know it sounds crazy. You just paid this guy money and Herbert ain't bad. But Roshan, mm -hmm. he just got that. He got something, bro. He got something. He got something. And I tell you this, depending on how Swift look, Rojo will be the number two running back the following season. Yep. I because agree. if Swift, if it's Swift the lead dog, and then you got Herbert, who I believe this is last year, and then you still had a few years left on Roshan Johnson, and if he looks just as good or if not better than Khalil Herbert, running backs will be – running backs are not as valuable. We've seen a little bit of value in them. Placed this offseason for sure. It was hot for running backs. Yeah. Yeah. But Ryan Pose ain't giving two running backs big money. Hell no. The cheaper uh, option will be Roshan Johnson. So yeah, yeah. I would say this uh, – after this season, you can see a one-two punch with Swift and Roshan Johnson. I agree. 100%. For sure. So let us know what you guys think below. Now it's time to get into the meat and potatoes of the show. That's you guys' voicemail. We got four of them, four of them today. Thank you guys for all calling in. We're going to kick this thing off on the right foot with my guy, Fred. What's the word? Fred. Come on, y'all boys. What it do? Bobby C-Dub, man. This be your boy, Fred, man. Man, I am just hope y'all having a good weekend. You know, I'm trying to have a good weekend as well catching some of these games or whatever the case is going on. Hey, it's going down, man. You know, we almost close to it. So I'm just looking forward to see, you know what I'm saying, what's going to happen, you know what I'm saying, during draft night. And see, like, well, I know, of course, that number one pick, we going to you know what I'm end up getting Caleb, though. But, hey, you know, check this out. What if Washington calls the Bears for that number one pick? Do you think Ryan Poles might listen to what they, you know what I'm saying, have to offer what they have to say, let's say Washington say, hey, we want to trade y'all, you know what I'm saying, the number one pick. What do y'all want? If they get back the two seconds we got, a next year first, and we get Terry McLaurin, and then we take that number two pick for Washington, we still get a quarterback, and then we get a nine, you know, and end up getting another wide receiver or a left tackle or edge. So do you think that's possible that that might can end up happening you know, during draft night, if we still don't end up, you know what I'm saying, getting Caleb Williams and we end up taking somebody in Washington come calling because I, because I'm looking at it like this, like, yeah, Cliff Kingberry, he did coach Caleb Williams and everything, and Caleb's from Washington, though. Do you think that's possible that that can happen during draft night? You know, I just want to know. You know what I'm saying? You never know. Because during NFL draft, you always going to get some surprises with the trades and some picks and everything. So I'm sitting up here. You know, just, just thinking about that scenario or whatever, though. So, uh, hopefully that, you no know, Ryan Poles with the four picks that he's going into the draft with, that he get the few pieces that we need. Hopefully we can find that diamond in the rough edge rusher, that diamond in the rough uh, left tackle as well, too. And, you know, whatever, you know, the other pieces that we need as well, too. So, I'm hoping that that happened, though. And if we stay at nine, I'm hoping that either Roma Duze falls to us either at nine if not, that Marvin Harrison Jr. possibly falls to us as nine because they've been talk they've been talking about selling the mark drive saying Marvin Harrison possibly could fall to us as nine though. So if that's possible, that's a plus that we still can get uh, Maserati Mar though. So I just want to know, call you guys on that, see what you, you know what your thoughts on that. So I hope you guys enjoy y'all weekend. Chicago up, fed down to nothing. Let's get it. Hopefully these goddamn sorry ass bulls. And goddamn it, shit, getting to the playoffs and shit. So, and sit in, fellas. Y'all stay up, man, and take it easy. Shout out to Fred on that one. Fred, you see, I can't wait till the season start, Fred. You've been real mellow and cool, calm, and collective. I need fiery Fred. So, once oh, the season come back, I can't wait. But C, uh, C Dub, take it away, my guy. Um, I do think that Washington, Washington probably called like two, three times, four, five, six times to the Chicago Bears doing this offseason, just to let you know. Uh, 
I don't think, me personally, that they moving off Caleb Williams. I don't give a damn what they offer. They can offer whatever they want. I don't think they moving. And just for this uh, reason only, uh, Ryan Poles then had his uh, building phase where he wasn't getting critiqued as much by his bosses or whoever run or Virginia, the Miskaskies, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, he was building up. Now it's time to show and prove. So now he didn't, he stood on 10 toes. He got rid of Justin Fields and he's going to pick up Kayla Williams. He's going to pick him up because his, I think his legacy at the very least is that, on the line. I don't want to say his job on the line, but you could probably say that his job is probably on the line now because we're going to have to see results now with this team. So, uh, no, I don't see K him moving off that first pick for any offer. I don't think it's any offer that can move him off that first pick. Now we come to that number nine pick. I'm thinking it's if, if Dunzie fall to us, we definitely going to swoop a wide receiver. Um, if Marvin Harrison Jr. falls to nine, First of all, I'll be thinking, like, that's fucking crazy. What's wrong with those teams up there? But we are take them. All the other people that we had at nine is going to get crossed out, and you pick Marvin Harrison Jr. But um, I don't know. What you think is a possibility of them taking a call at the draft? Like, this deal is – this uh, offer is too crazy. We got to take it. Y'all go ahead and take Caleb. We'll take Jaden Daniels or or uh, uh, May. Uh, what do you think the chances? I think it's probably anything is. I it ain't it's happening. A, it's a zero percent chance, bro. It ain't happening. You <laughs> trade the number. Look, it sounds great, and and yes, I'm, it I'm and it's not directly towards you, Fred, but it's just like <clears throat> if you trade away Caleb Williams and he go on to be a legendary quarterback in Washington, and you end up with Jaden Daniels, and you three years later from now draft another quarterback. You fat. You fat, bro. You fat. Yeah. The only you shall only be taking calls on every other pick, <laughs> yep. not the first one. Yeah. Look, you could go offensive overload with Terry McClure and get a couple more picks and be stacked up. But as C Dub put out there, you built this process already. It's time yep. to see results. The guy. I don't think you trade away Justin Fields to go get a skinnier Justin Fields and Jaden Daniels. That's all it is. That's just all I'm saying. I think <laughs> Jaden Daniels, I love what he's what he's capable of doing. I believe he is NFL ready. I do. Yeah. But the guy with the higher upside who might not hit the ground running starting his first few games is Caleb Williams, but I believe the ceiling is higher. But – you don't fuck around with this. If anybody calling for the first pick, we hanging up. Or say, make an offer for the ninth pick. What you got? Yeah, we got this nine, though. Do you feel me? <laughs> nah, we ain't trading the first. We got this nine, though. We got this nine. Pick for that hard. Look at that pick. Oh, it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, you, you, I don't, you don't trade away Justin Fields for a Drake May or nah. J.J. McCarthy or a skinnier nah. virgin and Jaden Daniels. That's just That's me. That's just crazy. I was on that at first. Like, you got to really look at Jaden Daniels, and I like what he does. But now it's just over with. And I think all the interviews and – but they, they they met with Kayla Williams before the combine, I believe. Yeah. Then they tried to get him in for an early top 30 visit. They had to reschedule, of course. Then at his pro day, they met with him the day before his pro day and went to his pro day. And before his top 30 visit, they had him in for dinner. All signs yep. point to Caleb Williams is the quarterback, in my opinion. And he I not still visiting. be wrong. He not all visiting signs no more point teams. to Caleb Williams. And I haven't heard any other quarterback coming through the door. So. And he and Caleb not going to any any visits and, to any yeah, exactly. other team. Z <laughs> Zero. <Yeah. laughs> I'm with you though, Fred. It's, hey, Ryan Post can shock the world, but I think hey, you better be damn right. Yeah, if you want to shock the world, and I think hey. I think don't do it. Draft I Caleb. Think, <laughs> don't do he, it. I think if he do it, he's gonna be in a blender. People gonna go crazy if he do that. Don't bro. do it's, it. That's not a good move. Don't do Jim. it, bro. You got a you got hella picks next season. Hella. Yes. Yeah. You good. You don't need to keep doing this. It's time to get win now players. Yeah. That's how I'm looking at it. Yeah. But hey, thanks, Fred, for calling in. Now we're gonna move on. C dub this next one.
It's from Vaughn, not King Vaughn. This from Big Vaughn. Vaughn. <laughs> yo, yo, CDC, Chicago Bears Central. What's the word? It's your boy, Big Vaughn. From the low end, man, calling to check in on you know, our boys, man. What's going on? First thing first. Hey, hey, my boy, I need to know, are you getting an adequate amount of sleep, my brother? The amount of work that y'all been putting in, man, and the content y'all been pushing is crazy. It's mind-blowing. Keep doing what y'all boys doing. Y'all get a city hope. Y'all put out only the best news. Number one in everything Chicago Bears for a reason, man. So salute to y'all. Keep doing what y'all are doing. But the thing I want to pose to y'all today was, man, last night I came across a mock draft that was pretty, pretty interesting, man. They had a... Uh, Minnesota Vikings trading up to the number four pick, trading with the Cardinals, and the Minnesota Vikings going to select J.J. McCarthy. In turn, slide down to the number five pick, we also have another trade. We had the Chicago Bears trading with the Los Angeles Chargers, and uh, we taking Marvin Harrison Jr. So, to me, that was just crazy to see. But also, it, it made me think, you know what I'm saying? Like, that is a possibility. That is fathomable. I do believe that J.J. McCarthy do hold the key to this year's draft as far as the Chicago Bears are concerned. There's room for us to, I believe, get one of these top receivers in the top pick. But it was really interesting to see the Chicago Bears move up from number nine to number five and try to go after that guy, man, Marvin Harrison Jr., to give someone to grow with Caleb Williams and, you know, give somebody. I look at it like this. Marvin Harrison Jr., that's the guy you put opposite of DJ Moore. You let Keenan Allen be a technician in that spot like he's been doing for years. And we're talking about a very, very scary offense, not only for the upcoming season, but we're talking about for the upcoming future. So, you know, I just want to drop that on y'all here this morning. Some slight, nothing too major. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that. And let me know, hey, if you find that draft or uh, anybody find that mock. You know what I'm saying? Whoever do the uh, mailbag, whether it be my boy Hayes, whether it be Bobby and C-Dub, C-Bo, it don't matter, man. We all family, and I rock with y'all boys. Keep doing what y'all doing. Chicago up. Bet down, baby. For sure. Shout out to Big Vaughn from the low end. Shout out to y'all. My wife, she from the low end, too. 4844 Project. Give me a project check. Wah, wah. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> anyway, hey, I say anything can happen, bro. I know that number one, you don't move off that. But if you want to, you want to, if Marvin Harrison drops like many people believe that he will, and you believe that's the guy, go get the guy. You can, you can give up some picks from next season. The Chicago Bears are in prime position to continue to win games and continue to get better. And I think that you don't fool around with this. Look at what the Houston Texans did. They went and got themselves C.J. Stroud. Then they traded up and they took um, the pass rusher from Alabama, Alabama, Will Anderson. So you got to go get your guy. Get your building blocks. Build this thing out and allow these guys to grow together. Keenan Allen, he's here for one year as of right now. He's not re-signed. So if you get a guy, if you can go get Marvin Harrison Jr., he can learn from DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and use that talent to continue to push this thing forward, and you can phase Keenan Allen out, or you can re-sign him at a lower price, and you still got three valuable wide receivers. It's a win-win situation. I say you go get your guys. If your guys on the board, go get them. What's to you, We ain't got nothing else to lose, bro, because you're not going to have a ninth pick next season because you're going to win games. You're going to win games. You won seven last year, and you were still kind of building this thing out. The thing is still built. It, I think you still got building to do, but it's mostly built. So now get your blue chip players. Get your guys in here to push this thing forward. Don't fuck around with this. Take take Go get your guys. It's, pretty that, it's, it's just that simple, bro. C-Dub, what you got? Hey, hey, shout out to Vaughn from the low wind. Appreciate the love you gave us, bro. We appreciate Absolutely. that. And we do this for y'all, bro. We do this for y'all. Now, if the Minnesota Vikings want J.J. McCarthy, 
<laughs> he well, let me tell you, Minnesota fans, he the best quarterback in this draft. He got an arm like a rocket, bro. He can move in the pocket, he can run on a you know what I'm saying? He got all that. I'm just juicing. He cold. For the Vikings. He go cold. get him. Go get go that get him. <laughs> but look, that's a scenario that I didn't really think about the Bears trading up. Now, this is a good, this is a good thing. This I think I, I love this scenario that you put out, Vaughn. Uh, if we want to trade up, you probably got to use one of your assets from next year's draft and this this year's nine pick. If we could trade up to five with the Minnesota Vikings and get Marvin Harrison Jr., oh, my God, the the football guys is lined up for us this year. This will be the most perfect thing. And, and I will, I'll talk about the wide receiver room and the wide receiver situation in a different video. But this will be great. This is just, it just falls in line like a complete puzzle for us for the future, for this year and for the future. And that includes guys like Keenan Allen, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., DJ Moore. And, and don't forget about Tyler Scott. I'll talk about this in the future, but I would love for this type of scenario to happen and we can go up and trade up and get a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr. That will be fantastic. Then the plan will be done. And then you just got to go in and finish up the trenches and we ready to rock. Ready to rock. It's really that simple, bro. That is a great scenario. If you somehow come out of the first round with Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr., it's oh, already an A-plus oh draft for me. How you it's get already both? an A-plus <laughs> draft for me. And then, <laughs> C-Dub, you got to think about it, too, before we move on. You think about it, too. You use your second-round pick in this draft to get Montez Sweat. There's no second-rounder that's going to be better than Montez Sweat. You use yep. your fourth-rounder to get Keenan Allen. There's no fourth-round wide receiver that's going to be better than Keenan Allen. So nope. your draft – so you telling me in 2024 you get Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison, Montez Sweat, Keenan Allen, and whoever else you draft, Ooh. it's an A. It's an A, bro. That's an A. If you could peep how we peep it, Joe, don't be a square, don't be a lame, because we know that Montez Sweat and Keenan Allen are not getting drafted. But peep game, though. If you look at it in, in, in this way, this is a skull, bro. How you get both the top two players on the draft? Oh, we crazy. pull that off. Pull that off. Pull it off, Pose. Call the phone. <laughs> I should have worn my Ryan Pose shirt, but that's going to come out on draft night, maybe. We'll see. We shall see. Thanks for calling in, uh, Vaughn. And lastly, man, we we, hey, we started this thing so we could push this thing, and people act like you can't have opinions and change it. You change it. With new information, people act like you can't come off your stance. Hey, I'm not a right all the time, but we're going to move on. It is what it is. And be on the lookout for that mock draft later today from Bobby. It's going to be hot. It's gonna be lit, y'all. It's gonna be know. hot, <laughs> but hey, the next one, C Dub, we got is Tyrese. Here it is. Come Yak boys, what it do? It's your boy Tyrese man, down here in Arkansas, by way of Southside Chicago. Check this out, y'all. Um, I was looking at it like this here. We are gonna pick up Caleb, of course, and about. I think that would help make Caleb a whole lot better because. Our defense is going to keep Caleb Williams on the field. Our defense will be so much, so elite to where, um, man, Caleb get all the stats that he needs, you know, the cost to get better. But seriously, on a serious note, I feel like if, um, if Caleb Williams is somewhat in the conversation of rookie of the year deal, I really believe that the Chicago Bears could look like the, um, Houston Texas of last year, but probably a little bit better because I know we all want Roman Dunze with that number nine pick, but if you think about it, man, we could put either Everett or Cole Komet up in the slot because to create mismatches and problems, you know, and then you know the two outside receivers we got. And don't forget, I mean, I know everybody still sleep on Silas Scott, but he was a rookie last year. That boy got skills. He got picked that where he got picked that for a reason, man. If he, um, if he come through and have a, a solid second year, man, sky's the limit, you know what I'm talking about? So I just feel like with our number nine pick, even if we trade back, we need to go get one of them top defensive ends, whether it's first, Turner, or Latu. Latu is my favorite out of um, out of them three. Or the sleeper pick that a lot of people don't talk about, Darius Robinson. You know, if we, we can trade back a little bit to pick him up, I think he's going to end up being one of the best defensive rookies that come out this year. So we're going to have to keep an eye out on, on, on all that because 
I'm predicting it. We're going to go offense, defense in the first two picks. And um, I think we'll be all right because we can still probably end up picking up um, Jerry Rice uh, with our last pick if we only stay with the fourth pick. And let that third one be uh, the developmental center that's going to sit behind Ryan Bates. Man, we got an opportunity to, to make some noise with just four picks. And I just feel like the defensive end should be one of our first uh, picks. And because we might end up extending Keenan Allen for next year, you know, uh, for two years or whatever, then we can go get the best wide receiver next year in the draft with our first round pick. And till then, like you say, oh, hey, Chicago up, bear down, I fuck with you guys. All right, so we heard from Tyrese. My guy say go get that defensive end. C-Dub, what you got? Hey, shout out to my man Tyrese from the South Side. Oh, bro, um, you said something like the, the Bears could be ca- ca- uh, uh, comparable to the Houston Texans uh next season i will go this far the bears can be better than the houston texans next year and not because of caleb williams because of our defense is better than houston texans defense our weapons um i think are better than the houston texans weapons than last year uh when you say keenan allen dj moore cole Komet, and mr everett and also add uh swift uh herbert and roshan johnson and that's a lot of experience on the on the bear side. A lot of people have been through a lot of wars on our side of the fence. And those Houston guys, they are very talented. They are very good, but they're very young. So I think we could be better on that side of the fence. And I do. I won't be mad if we get a nice defensive end. These are the three things I won't be mad at. An offensive tackle, a defensive end, or a wide receiver. Not in that order. In, in that number nine pick. Um you have some great points on there. Also, I would like to point out if we don't be able to get one of those guys like a Dozier and uh, Neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr., I will be okay with Brandon Rice. He has the familiarity with Caleb Williams at USC, and he's not that bad. He, you know who his daddy is? You know who his daddy is? He ain't that bad. He can't be that bad. So even though he don't know, even though he don't – you know, this kid said that Jerry Rice ain't the baddest, best uh, uh, wide receiver ever. Brandon Rice, his own son, said that he ain't the best wide, wide receiver ever. He said Justin Jefferson is. That's just, that just shows you where this generation goes. You know, that's this generation, bro. So, um, yeah, yeah, man, good, good takes. <laughs> he probably was. <laughs> good takes. And we appreciate you. Keep on tuning in, my guy. Definitely keep on tuning in. C-Dub, he talked about Caleb Williams early. Hey, I'm going to tell you this. Caleb Williams is about to smoke this rookie record for the Chicago Bears. I'm going to just put it out there. I think it's about to get smoked. You want to know why? Guess right. who's the all-time leader? Guess who Guess who has the rookie record for passing yards in Bears history, C-Dub? Rex Grossman. <laughs> no. Mitch let me get one more track. Oh, let me get one more track. <laughs> Mitch Trubisky in his rookie season threw for 2,193 yards. Caleb 21, Williams got the Wait smoke. a minute, nephew. Wait a minute. 2,100 is our rookie record, bro. Caleb about to smoke it. That's all I'm going to say. And the man only had seven passing touchdowns. <laughs> so. Bro, he finna crush. What? He about to crush this rookie record, bro. Wait a minute. Did he play 16? So I'm going to look it up. Did Mitch <laughs> play 16? <laughs> He played Mitch Trubisky played 12 games and got 21 93 and seven touchdowns and seven interceptions. So That's get ready. Get ready for you. Caleb Williams to start shattering and breaking records in year one. That's how I'm looking at it. I don't with, with the offensive coaching staff is gonna be sweet. But I'm with you. Hey, everybody, I didn't put it out there. I like lot too better than most of these pass rushers. Stay tuned for the mock draft. But anyway, we're going to move on to the last one of the day. We got Roy. Here it is. Roy. Hey, Bobby C. Dub, Steve O. What's happening? It's, uh, this is Roy. I haven't called in in a while, but just got done listening to one of um, you guys' um, YouTube videos. Well, mostly Hayes. He was doing the mailbag this Friday. Um, I just wanted to say this right here, man. I'm a definitely was a Justin Fields fan, hands down. Okay, they didn't got rid of him. It is what it is. But 
everybody was selling Caleb Williams, pushing him. Uh, he's the best thing since Andrew Luck. Uh, he's been the highest rated quarterback in college for the last two years. You know, damn near like the man can walk on water. Okay, I can get it. Selling the hype, you know, and he is a phenomenal college quarterback player. But at the same time, people cannot revert back to, oh, well, if he don't have a phenomenal rookie season, that's okay. In reality, it is okay. But in this case right here, it's not. Because he's been sold that he's about to come to the Chicago Bears and just go crazy. He's he's being put into one of the best positions that any rookie quarterback has been in personnel-wise. So, no, a losing season is not going to be acceptable. Now, if they can make it to the playoffs, they do. If they don't, they don't. But they got to have a they got to end the season with the winning record because this guy is proclaimed to be the best thing since Jesus Christ himself, the next Patrick McHolmes, et cetera, et cetera. And I understand the reality of it. He's a, he will he'll be a rookie quarterback. Now, does that mean he will not prevail as years to come? No, he can still turn out to be one of the greatest that ever did it. But to say well, if he has a regular season or, you know, a losing season, it's okay for his rookie year. In reality, it's not because he's been put in a phenomenal situation personnel-wise. He's been pushed and advocated as he is the best thing smoking. So, no, he can't have a losing season. And I'm not saying that to say, well, if he have a losing season, you know, he's a bust. No, he wouldn't be a bust. The season definitely will be a bust, but he definitely need to do what he need to do by year three. Because guess what? They going to be talking about picking up a fifth-year option in his third year. You know, so like I say, I'm a Justin Field fan. But I, I, I'm... All right, so we heard from Roy. Roy, I'm going to say this. I'm going to pose this to you, Roy. Let's say Caleb Williams comes in and his first rookie season is mid. You're going to be up in arms, right? I will too, probably, most likely. But let's say year two, year three, year four, year five, Caleb Williams leads the Chicago Bulls to consecutive four consecutive playoff bursts. Bears. Yeah, the Bears to four consecutive playoff bursts, and he gets to the NFC Championship twice. It's a win, right? Is it a win or a loss? That's all I'm going to say. He's allowed to come in and develop as a rookie quarterback. I do believe that he will help the Chicago Bears this season and help them get to the playoffs. That's my belief. I can be wrong. I don't give a damn. But I will say if he does it, it's not the end of the world. Now, in year two, if he comes out and stinks up the joint, then we got something to talk about, like you said. But... Again, it is a bit unfair to think that Caleb Williams in year one is going to take us to the Super Bowl and, or an uh, NFC championship. It's not happening. No, it's not happening. Um, Shout out to Roy, though. Uh, nice take that you, that you just brought through. Um, You know, they got that line that people say two things that can be right. Uh, In this particular point, numerous things can be right. First, uh, the Chicago Bears is expected to have a, a successful season. Second, we expect Caleb Williams to play good football next year and help our team get to where we need to go. Another point, we know that he is a rookie and rookies going to make rookie mistakes. Fourth, we still expect the Bears to get to the playoffs. So a lot of things can be right. And it might even be more added on to that quote. But at the end of the day, he has got all that praise. The, uh, I don't even compare him to Patrick Mahomes and all these other quarterbacks. I hope he can just be the greatest Caleb Williams. I, I never like being like somebody else. Like, don't name me after nobody else. Even I'm the best uh, uh, basketball player in the world. Don't compare me to Michael Jordan. 
you heard what I said, Michael Jordan. Um, yeah, man. Uh, a lot of things can be right at the same time, bro. But at the end of the day, it's about the Chicago Bears, and we expect this to be a successful season, and ultimately ending with the Chicago Bears going to the playoffs this year coming up. Well said. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is it from us today. Thanks to all the guys that called in today for the mailbag episode. You can go ahead and follow the show on all social media platforms at Shy Bear Central. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. We are the number one spot for everything. Chicago Bears. Tune in. If you want to call in and be a part of an episode like this, that number is 773-242. 9336. And we're going to end it on the right note. Shot town up and bed down, baby. Peace out. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, 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 break.